One of the important reasons we study solutions is that the presence of solutes can affect some properties of solvents. These properties that are dependent on the number of solute particles present are called colligative properties. If you live in an area where they salt the roads in winter, you've already experienced one kind of colligative property that's known as freezing point depression. In these situations, they salt the roads so that the salt is a solute will lower the freezing point of the water. In this video and the next few, we will examine four colligative properties of solutions. Vapor pressure lowering, freezing point depression, boiling point elevation, and osmotic pressure. You might recall from previous studies that the vapor pressure of a solution is defined as the pressure of a gas above its liquid phase when the two phases are in dynamic equilibrium. When a solute is added to a solvent, the solution will have a lower vapor pressure than the pure solvent. This can be explained because we know that in the evaporation process, it's the solvent particles at the surface that are moving from the liquid phase to the gas phase. Since this takes place at the surface of the liquid, if solute particles are present, some of the surface will be occupied by solute particles. This will decrease the chances that solvent particles on the surface will be able to escape into the gas phase. Vapor pressure lowering by the presence of a solute can be described quantitatively by Reolt's law. Reolt's law says that the vapor pressure of a solution is equal to the mole fraction of the solvent multiplied by the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. Let's look at an example using Reynolds' law. If the vapor pressure of water is 23.8 torr at 25 degrees Celsius, what is the vapor pressure of a sucrose solution at the same temperature if the solution is composed of 0 0.10 moles of sucrose and 0 0.90 moles of water? In order to answer this question, we can apply Reynolds' law. The first statement of the problem gives us the vapor pressure of the pure solvent water, which is 23.8 torr. In order to find the vapor pressure of the solution, we need to determine the mole fraction of the solvent. In this case, we recognize that water is the solvent and the sucrose is the solute. Now in previous videos, we talked about mole fraction as being the moles of the solute divided by the moles of the solute plus the moles of the solvent. But in this case, in Reynolds law, we need the mole fraction of the solvent. You calculate it the same way except using the moles of the solvent in the numerator. In this case, the mole fraction of the water would be given by 0 0.90 moles of water in the numerator divided by 0 0.90 moles of water plus 0 0.10 moles of sucrose. This gives us a mole fraction of the solvent water of 0 0.90. We now multiply the mole fraction of the solvent, 0 0.90, times the vapor pressure of the pure solvent, 23.8 torr, and that will give us the vapor pressure of the solution, which would have a value of 21.4 torr. After watching this video, you should be able to define what a colligative property is. You should be able to identify four different colligative properties. You should be able to explain what happens to the vapor pressure of a solution compared to the vapor pressure of a pure solvent. And you should also be able to use Reynolds' law to quantitatively determine the vapor pressure lowering of a solution.